This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. Welcome to the largest skate park in America, if this was 2014 to 2021. This is 78,000 square feet, but in 2021, they built a skate park in Des Moines that's 88,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet bigger. But I thought it'd be cool to go through this park today and kind of see why you would need that much space and what you could build in that space and if this place actually utilizes it. So this is an inside look down to the ground from a skateboarder's perspective. Let's see if it's a, let's see if it's a good park. Just cause it's big doesn't mean it's awesome. There is a full 20 minute inside look at the skate park, but we actually didn't get the chance to skate the park, but this was a skate trip with Revive Skateboards. So I'm just gonna showcase the entire trip as a whole. That's why this video is so long, but I promise there is a lot a lot of really interesting, good, fun content. So enjoy. So I think I'm the first one here at this spot, but here's an issue. Uh, you have to cross this lake and I don't really see a comfortable way of crossing, maybe way down there. It's cool that they picked something really chill for the first spot, but it looks a little, I mean, it looks really chill and it's extremely windy. Look how brown the water is. just like the mellowest hip. Like it almost feels like flat ground. So windy, like it just blows your board away. Justin, can you explain the situation to us? Cops just pulled up and won't get out of the car. Dude. They're just sitting behind our cars. It's worse than telling us to leave because it feels like they're calling the tow truck or something. Right. I don't like that. I think they're calling the cops. You think the cops are calling the cops on the yeah. cops? Yeah. The oh, that is one of theirs. Oh, the other car's mine. There might be a chance that I'm not getting a ticket. Somehow I think I've avoided a ticket because I was pulled up to the curb and maybe because Brian was in the center, he's getting a ticket. Damn. I think I'll take this opportunity to go get some lunch. One of my favorite things to do in new cities is to check out the local vegan cuisine. That place had a really dope atmosphere. So let's see how the green juice is. Oh my God, that's so sweet. Doesn't taste the healthiest, but it definitely tastes the most delicious. Tell me that does not look delicious. Holy crap, that is so good. Okay, we're literally almost dealing with the exact same situation. These are curbs, I can park here, but that is a gate and that's a dead end as well. So not only do we have to hop the gate, but Brian better not park in front of the gate again. So we just kind of have to gamble again. This is street skating. You're almost risking getting another ticket. At least Brian is, because so far I'm good. I hope that's not the spot behind there because that is a completely dry hubba, no wax. I also just heard someone, so I'm hopping these fences to a place that's open. There are people working way over there, but here is the hubba. John, the church is terrifying. So they texted me beforehand, checking out another spot in the area. Okay, double hop the fence back. Could have just hopped this one fence. Spot number three, and I actually recognize this one from videos. It's this hubba ledge thing and they have one on top as well. Looks really fun, a bit scary, but I mean, still. It does seem scary to go all the way just because you have all this contraption on the left to deal with. But if you could, that'd be fun. Pretty cool spot. Well, I think I finally did it. What? Got us to a spot that actually might work. This feels, wow, this feels good. It feels good Yeah, we're leaving. This is, this is not right, you cannot be here. We're leaving. We're leaving. We're leaving. Now. now. That's what we're doing. I know, but you guys still did. What? You no, you guys are still chatting and running around. I saw you filming. So now, please. We need to relax. I do Whoa. relax, but you need to relax yeah, too. Go. No, you're, you're trespassing. I am relaxed. You're trespassing, bro. <laughs> they have parking lot? 
Yes, sir. This is a public not a public property. This is private property. I will. That's why I want to do that. Brian, you, you should be a tax. I'll be in the car. Not yet. Anyways, please go. I'm leaving. Please go. I'm right down here. As long as you have to stay here, I'm happy to leave. I am here. Okay, you get out of here. Yeah, no, I want you to stay here. I'm going to stay here. This is my property. I am going to be here. Rate the spot. Uh, I'd give this a solid 9 out of 10. Damn, that's not bad. Are you going to nose manual it? I don't think I could ollie that high. Even here? Yeah, I could probably ollie that high. Yeah, like here. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just left. <laughs> he said a, they actually? He said a pin and left. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me do it quick. <laughs> I just want to do a lift slide. And that's really funny. I, I saw a pin and I looked up and the car was gone. <laughs> they literally left our asses. I have a huge favor to ask you. What, dude? I have to pee. With your... Not even gonna say yeah. it, dude. I don't know if you caught it, but hilariously, as soon as we got here, we got out of the car, started waxing the ledge, and they just left, and they sent us a pin. <laughs> that probably took, what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes? Yeah, that took like 15. Oh, no, 15 minutes. And they've already sent us another pin. So the other spot must have sucked as well. Or they just shut it down. True, you they never crushed know. it, dude, so quickly. Just like we just did with this spot. Yeah, I sat real good. You sat so hard i think they've sent us four different locations i think this is the fifth but there's supposed to be a tiny rail to skate i don't see it samuel maybe it's so small we can't see it oh true would be really cool john this is actually fine it's fine yeah it's fine <laughs> What? Hey, you saw it. You, somebody saw it. Hopefully it's recording. Yes, thank you. Dude! Yes! Gosh! I'm actually genuinely stoked. I That's a super good trick. trick. I haven't done that on a street rail ever. So, well, street rail, I guess. But still. Yeah. As disaster of today is, yeah. Yeah, it worked out okay. It did, yeah. I mean, I like this one we've actually seen it. Now, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the best tool for a creative entrepreneur, I guess, such as myself. What a weird word to call myself. But if you are in any creative field and you want to build a portfolio or a resume, it's really easy to put it in one platform on the website. They have award-winning templates to choose from, so you actually don't need to know about design. And in terms of actually reaching out to clients, you can have classes that people can pay for, you can have email campaigns, you can have scheduling, you can do all the cool stuff that big businesses do as an individual, like having your own blog with likes and comments, and of course, having your own online store. And now they have third-party distribution websites that you can connect with your store so you essentially don't have to 
have people fulfilling products, which is amazing. So Squarespace has everything that anybody in any creative field really needs for stepping up their business. If you wanna check it out, you can click the link in the description down below to get 10% off your first purchase or domain or go to squarespace.com slash John Hill for that same deal. Or you can just try it out for free. Go to squarespace.com, link in description down below. Thanks for sponsoring this video and enjoy the rest of this video. We're at the last spot. We probably have an hour left, so I'm just gonna set up my camera and try to film as much as I can, get some photos with Brian. But today has weirdly been a very good day and I feel like it's been really productive, even though I feel like they feel like it's been the opposite. I think the best way to do this tour is to literally start from this corner, go all the way around and end back here and give my perspective on everything that this place has. So if we start here, it's a two foot quarter pipe. This, I would immediately love. And also it's low enough for any new beginner to come to this park and try to be able to tinker with this entire area. But we'll cover this towards the end. So if we just start walking, we look to the left, and this is a bank. This is actually a little harder to skate than a quarter pipe because you can see that it cuts pretty sharp and then it goes straight. But if you like banks, I mean, this is ideal. It keeps going. You have the flat rail on the right. This is as basic as it comes. The ground is actually not rough, but it's not that crazy plaza smooth ground because it's outside and it's been weathered. So one thing that I thought was interesting immediately is that this thing right here turns into kind of a rail. You can see there's a drop on the other side, but fortunately you land in this bank that isn't really scary. Now this bank doesn't really have any practical effect besides potentially getting a little bit of speed towards that area, but there's nothing at the top really and there's nothing really else to do with it. That bank over there is pretty cool. It's a little steeper, but it's waxed on the top, so it's more accessible for slide tricks, unlike this one, which is a little too mellow actually to do slide tricks. So we look to the right, we have a Pier 7 manual pad, which is what these things are called, where you go on low and you drop off somewhat high. This thing looks beautiful. I love the granite that they actually use for this. So let's keep going. Now, if we look to the right, we see a big A-frame. This thing is no joke to get on. You have to hold the slide. It's a little more mellow backside, but it's a little hard because you're basically just pushing flat ground to get here. And then coming from the other side, it looks like you really need to build up momentum. So I feel like a lot of the speed that you build in this park to skate bigger things like this is a self-propelled momentum. So not using quarter pipes, etc. This looks really fun. This is a very, very mellow rail. It's a unique obstacle as well because you don't really see many things like this. So I would say that this is a really, really nice addition. I feel like we're gonna see a lot of things in this park that are kind of unique to the park. This three block might be a little too long to just skate kind of like a stair set. Plus you probably wouldn't want to. I like that people have taken the liberty to wax this ledge up here because it doesn't have metal on it originally. So it's cool that skaters took that initiative. This rail right here I think is mirrored from this rail that's based in Seattle. It's basically made out of rock. So it's primarily used for slide tricks rather than grind tricks because your trucks probably wouldn't want to go through that. This stair set seems pretty decent. It's kind of long for a five stair. One, two, three, four, five. That's very long for a five stair. But the point of it being longer is so that the rail is actually more mellow. So this is built primarily for the rail rather than the actual stair. So if we look at this thing right here, I always call these things whirly doos. I don't know what they're actually called, but it's cool that you can come in from the ramp here into this. It looks a little difficult and scary to skate, but still fun and then you launch out of this because it is quite a steep launch. So you're gonna be in the air hang timing for a bit before you land into the next transition. And then over here, you have a bump to manual pad. It's a pretty steep bump. 
I think it needs to be more mellow because for this one, you're going to be kind of going more vertical than out into a manual, which can be difficult, but it looks fun. And then you can see all the wear and tear just through the years and years and years of people doing tricks to manual. So clearly it's being skated. Now on the right here, you have another, you wouldn't call this a Pier 7 manual pad because it actually starts off pretty tall, but things like this are fun because you can actually stall at the top and then kind of turn yourself into a manual and go down. Plus right here, if you get on the ledge on either side, it's extremely low and looks pretty damn fun. So now we've entered a new part. This one I don't really need to go over too much, but it's just transition on both sides with a giant pyramid in the middle, and that's essentially it. It's very pretty. This pyramid right here is definitely maybe twice as steep as the ones you would normally find in skate parks. If people are going over the top, that would be insane, but it's kind of a bit of a steep pyramid. I feel like most skateboarders wouldn't actually enjoy skating something like this. I think it's funny that this looks like it's just scotch taped, even though I think that's very small hits of Bondo but to cover the cracks in a skate park is never the greatest sign. You want a skate park that's able to kind of stand the test of time without skaters having to kind of fix it. So this is the big boy section. This is kind of the uh, street league-esque type vibe where you have the hubbas, the handrails, the big hubba and the handrails, and the smaller hubba and handrails. So the ones on the side, they look, oh, they're actually much different. So this one over here is a lot more mellow. The hubba is a lot more mellow to get onto. You can see that it's only about a foot high to get onto. And then over here, it's a little taller on both sides. The stair set, as you can see, these stairs are much smaller. It's almost just as long as the five stair from before, but this is a seven stair. And if you look at this, this is a nine stair. So that's kind of cool. If you have any tricks that you really want to level up, you can really, there's so many things in this park where you can go from one stair, two stair, three stair, four stair, five stair, all the way up to nine stairs. So it's actually really good that they have something bigger in this park. It might not look super appetizing at the beginning, but if you're having a good day and you're just kind of going at it, then you can eventually take your tricks up. So right here, you have a funny looking transition. I love that there's just these Bondo hits kind of everywhere. It's definitely 2014 is a slightly older park. So it's gonna deal with the weather a bit. Now for something like this, cause it's a taller ledge, having a steeper transition leading up to it is actually a good thing. So you wanna get that extra pop to go up, but then you have to hold the ground for a fairly long time and you're gonna lose a lot of momentum even coming from over here. So maybe the thing in the middle is actually used more for get, garnering speed starting at the top and pumping through. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> it's funny that you have these two somewhat good ledges, but they're actually used for people sitting because there's no way that you can really get speed to skate them in uh, a meaningful way. So right here you have a little ledge. This actually looks really fun. Great for beginners to go from a curb to this ledge. You have, whoa, this crazy wall ride to a ledge. Hopefully, I'm sure there are people who hit this, but that is crazy. If you actually go up the transition and grind the top on the right, don't need to talk too much about it. It's just a long bank. And then another ledge that looks about the same size as this ledge over here. Another fun one, but this one has the added perk of grinding and then going into the transition on the right. So if we look over here, we have another stretched out four stair with, oh my God, a very tall out ledge. These are kind of massive. Well, no, they're not massive. It's, it's almost up to my knee, which is a tall ledge, but it goes backside and front side. So if you're someone who really wants to train for the streets, this is probably a great place to start. Getting your pop up good is gonna help with any obstacle in the future. And then it leads right into this steep quarter pipe directly in front. It looks like it's about three feet high and uh, it's a tight transition, which means it just very quickly goes vertical. And then over here you have a whirly do manual pad. So it's very low, which is kind of cool. I actually haven't seen one that looks exactly like this, but look how worn out it is. And that's not even from skating. This concrete wear out is either the way they initially built it or it's just purely from weather. So very cool obstacle. It has kind of a little crack on the other side though. So if you come from this direction, be wary. Didn't even notice that there are these two ledges on this side, which are pretty cool. I would say that uh, not that many people will probably be into the idea of just launching out, gapping a little bit and skating this ledge because you can see that it's really not grinded that often. But then this ledge actually is a bit more grinded. So they use this area 
more for a flat ledge feature, but you can also do tricks over the flat gap. And it's probably fun to learn how to do ride on grinds. So if you're someone who can't ollie that well yet, you can just kind of ride onto the grind. Uh, but be careful not to fall into the hole of doom, as everyone calls it. Now, we can go in a couple different directions. Right here, we can go to the right, or we can go to the left. I figured I might as well just talk about this little section, because this is actually really cool. This is a double kink rail, something you rarely, rarely see in skate parks, but it's extremely mellow. And this actually does look really fun to kind of learn the way of the kinks, because I've seen street rails that kind of resemble this, but this is a great place to start. These out ledges, they're actually normal height to get onto, but they go out pretty long. So you gotta kind of stay careful until the end. And then you have these ramps that go down. But of course, again, you have these bondo jobs, which, uh, they're a bit rough. So this feels kind of like a street spot in many ways. So here we are back to the right side and this is a snake run as they call it. So it's kind of a cool path for skaters to kind of go around and enjoy just a cruise. But the cool thing about this one is it has a lot of obstacles on the way. So you have the coping on top of the smaller quarter pipe. So you can kind of hit things on the way the whole time. You have this interesting quarter pipe without coping. So they call this noping where you can actually do a whole range of tricks without a coping kind of interfere with the way that you're popping in or popping out, which is fun. And then you have that here, here, and here, which is cool. And then you have this extra one on top. So I think this just allows you to get really creative in a lot of different ways. And I feel like there's probably a lot of skaters who come here exclusively, exclusively just to skate this little area. This one right here actually has pool coping which is really nice. It's a, it feels very good. And if you are an old school skater, then you get to get that feel that you've missed for so long because pools are becoming more of a rare resource in this world. This is a very, very tight transition. But before we go the rest of the way this way, we're gonna be cutting off everything behind. So let's at least take a look at the two bowls hidden behind the snake runs. This is obviously the area where people will be skating the most transition. But if you look at this one, I think they're close to the, oh, I was gonna say close to the same size, but this one is clearly bigger. This one starts off about five feet, and then it goes down to what looks like about nine or 10 feet. Uh, bowls are kind of hard for me to explain because they feel like they're kind of self-explanatory. So this one is actually much smaller. This is the highest point, and I would say this one is about eight feet. And over here, it's about six feet, but six feet the entire time. And then you come over here and you have an eight foot transition. And this one is definitely more circular. So you're gonna have a much different cruise on both of these bowls. All right, now let's go on this way. Now this is kind of funny because I was talking about those two benches earlier that you would just sit on, but this bench is actually accessible to the skaters. And since it was built on a path where it's accessible, skaters took the liberty to wax the hell out of it. So now you have this cool, slick, curved ledge, which is fun. It's fun that you have a skate park that's already so big, and then you can kind of find things within the skate park to explore. I actually find that to be very fascinating. So let's go over here. This is the signature of the skate park. So this is something that kind of signifies, oh, that's North Houston. So they have this giant, giant funnel. And now there are, of course, a couple of these throughout the country, but this is a big, big bowl section so if you are someone who likes skating transition you got some knee pads you got a helmet then you're probably going to have fun for i mean forever you could have fun for 30 years here if you wanted to so let's go around to see if there are any features that we didn't notice the first time my god even just pumping back and forth in that bowl would be really fun because it doesn't have a flat at the bottom so it would definitely be a new experience than what you're used to even with skating normal mini ramps and transitions I'm not really sure what the point of this curb on top is here but it would be funny just to see someone trying tricks like off the curb, just onto the flat and then rolling in, which is psychotic. And then I guess if you want to, you could probably figure out a way to kind of ride down the top of this and then maybe survive by veering off to the left before you're actually going into the transition, which is steep and terrifying. But even coming over here, I'm noticing that this is probably about 10 feet. It's so steep that it almost feels like it goes over vert but it's definitely possible. Probably something I would just drop in on and then run away from my dear life. And then over here, I think you have something just as steep. Yep, this is about the exact same height. And then you have the wall of doom. So this is probably something that a lot of people have actually attempted to come here to skate, because sometimes at signature spots in skate parks, people will literally travel and be like, 
I skated that wall at North Houston Skate Park and I did a rock to fakie, which is actually insane because this is an extra five feet beyond the coping when I'm seeing how high it is to me right now. This is literally five feet high from here. My God, I can't believe anyone would ever touch this and I'm sure they have. So that's pretty much it. That's the big bowl section. And then we have even this little fun transition. It's cool when they kind of add little features like this throughout the park, just to kind of get you excited as you're moving along. You have this thing jutting out, so make sure you don't run into that if you're just going full speed. And then you have this cool thing, which I was thinking, are you grinding this vertically? Like imagine someone who rides up the wall and then somehow grinds this like a flat rail, but being completely horizontal with their bodies. That would be pretty interesting. So over here, the one thing I missed before we continue on with the snake run that we looked at is first of all this perfect quarter pipe here now this one is actually mellow and nice of course if you go too fast you end up on the other side and then you're in the danger territory but we have these little curbs just a bunch of curbs and a bunch of ledges and a bunch of unique ways to kind of skate these curbs because a lot of skate parks will just put in a flat ledge and keep it basic and here they tried to keep it somewhat interesting by adding different angles and different ways of hitting it. It's basically the same ledge multiplied three times, but you can kind of skate it going this way and then you can quickly zoom into the transition. And I think they're trying to give you a way of using quick feet and being creative, which I always, always uh, root for. As we continue along, we have these very steep, skinny top parts. I'm not really sure why they're this skinny, but I think with everything that we already have, why not add a feature that's so unique? Here, you can actually ramp up and skate the top of this. Of course, you see the Bondo job once again, because I'm sure it got kind of rough there, because it means people were skating it. And then you have these whirly do's as well. These are really fun to actually ollie from one side to the other. When you figure out the timing, there's nothing more satisfying. This is kind of a unique feature. I don't know, I guess you would just kind of skate it like a pyramid hip. It's funny that it just juts out like that though. I don't think there's really anything added that you can do with the jutted out feature besides maybe stalls on the top of it. You can actually skate this little gap as well, which I think is kind of funny if someone did. And then right here, the transition starts extending, it goes up and it goes into this kind of curb looking thing on top, which I think would be fun. It's pretty mellow throughout, so it wouldn't be too hard to actually get to the top. And then you have this wall, which is extremely steep. It might be kind of hard to tell on the camera with some of these features, but but that's a steep wall, but it would be fun to hit. And it's only six feet tall, so you don't really have too far to go down, but you have, go, you have far enough. That's what I know. Right here, you have a curb on the top, so this is great for slappy tricks, learning how to do slappy no slides, slappy crook transfers. The snake run actually goes through almost the entire park, so I say we go up here and take a quick look at these other two bowls. What in the world is this? So this one, is just an egg. It's like a 10 foot bowl, but it is just a circle. That's kind of funny. And if you want, you could skate over this part right here. Now, I think this is supposed to actually really resemble what you'd find in backyard pools in California back in the day. But look over here too, like the way you ride in, you kind of drop in and then you pump and then you hit this wall. So that's probably fun for certain people. Uh, for me, it seems even scarier when it's like this compact and tight. If you look at this one too, it literally looks like it's only like 12 feet across, but it's long. So when you go in there, it feels like you're just like entering a new dimension and trying to figure out a way to survive and get out. So that's, uh, that's a lot. Moving on from the two egg bowls, we have this wall ride. If you have the skill set, you can actually make it to the very top, but that is a brave adventure, my friend. And on top here, if we look, we have this, which is funny because this is waxed, but it leads right into this wall. So I'm not really sure how people are skating this. Uh, I'm interested in seeing and finding out. Right here, you have another slappy grind, which doesn't look like it's skated very often because this transition seems a little steeper and more difficult to get to. It's like, if you're gonna bother, you might as well just do this one here where it looks like the ride to it is a lot more mellow. And now we're at the end of the snake run right here. It just basically turns into a steep bowl section. You have the coping that is literally never hit. It's completely dry, but this is kind of where you start. I think people drop in here and then they take the adventure of a lifetime and they go all around the park or they start on this side and they end up 
back on this side. So very, very cool feature. With everything else that you have on the side, I feel like that's gonna be a very, very fun added facet. You can also pump up this way and skate this part. You can see that there's some wax marks, so people are sliding across this. There's someone cleaning in the bowl right now, so I don't wanna interrupt, but we can take a long lens view where here is another snake run slash transition. This one looks pretty cool though. It actually goes down, skates this part right here. So it's just another tucked in clamshell, AKA just a big bowl wall. And then you can pump here. It's a little skinnier. And then when you zoom out, you can see that it just goes into another pocket. Now this is actually pretty big. This is like 11 feet high. So this is uh, what they call a clamshell when it becomes over vert. So this one actually extends past just being completely vertical. There's already the first kid at the park right when it hit 8 a.m. So this is gonna, whoa. So they actually put a chain on this so that skateboarders could not skate it but we got this guy upside down, just stuck to the wall. Sir, do you need help? Interestingly enough, if you make it through this snake run, you can actually zoom out of this hole. And where do you enter? Where we started at the very, very beginning, this section right here. Wow, it's actually really interesting now looking at this hole. <laughs> okay, uh, <clears throat> but realizing what goes on beyond it, which is a snake run that goes on forever, which he, said was his favorite aspect of the park. So thank you, sir, who was working. Like I said at the beginning, we're gonna cover this stuff at the end. So here we have just a normal marble flat ledge. We have this exact replica of an obstacle that you would find at Roanoke Skate Park, except a little rougher. You have this curb right here, and it's kind of funny because it has these weird banks beforehand. There's no real practical benefit to that. That might just be kind of like an added fun. And then right here next to me is the quarter pipe that extends throughout but it's really cool that you have these sharp metal ledges so you can actually skate the ledges into the bank. We saw a couple features similar to this before and then you have another ledge. So if you wanna practice lines, you can hit this ledge and then hit that ledge, which I feel like it'd be really hard for me just to even get past the entrance of this place. But this is it. This is North Houston Skate Park, 78,000 square feet of amazingness. This park is actually incredible welcome to day two and the final day of our houston skate trip with revive skateboards i am currently waiting for them to arrive and we are going to skate the most south carolina looking spot ever the homies have arrived That's my boss. He owns the company that I ride for, uh, Revive Skateboards, that's who I'm pro for. But I love, love this process. It's so much more fun than I remember, then I realized these are my best friends, so obviously it's gonna be even more fun with them. Look at this quarter pipe. Holy moly. There's nothing here at all, except for this really good ledge. <laughs> this even better flat rail. <laughs> I would like to say that looks like the scariest rail on earth from this angle. So this is the only thing that's even somewhat cool at the spot. Is this why well, you can't see? This is the only thing remotely cool. I guarantee that as soon as Brian gets here, he's going to want to leave. What do you think? Okay, I already feel bad for uh, talking. I just, this place has a lot of potential. It's going to get there, but this is the beginning process. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, the flat ground looks good and the gap looks cool. So, I mean, let's just skate it. About to get kicked out by skaters. Oh! I mean, I knew that it was just the rail. You see the quarter pipe? Oh yeah, I do see the quarter pipe. And he wants you to film his face. No, I said blur my face. Do not put me on YouTube.com. It's too late. I'm sorry, my no. friend. No. I'm sorry.
that was actually quite a nice session. Uh, the kick the feeble I'm happy with. Andy tried to trick for a while, but he got so burnt out. It is actually starting to get hot again, but it's just the sun beating down on you, especially on a foundation spot. It's like reflective. So your skin is just burning and melting. But Justin got a trick, I got a trick. Felt pretty good. I think Sam Tabor got a trick as well. So we're gonna keep moving on. But we are getting a lot of skating in on this trip and it's so fun. I do feel a little bad. Andy is like really, really burnt out just from that session. Rightly so. Tried to trick for a very long time. So next spot. Andy, I'll miss you, man. I'll miss you. I'm actually leaving at the same time you are, so I'm gonna leave. Yeah. It's not authentic unless I'm filming. I know. <laughs> Goodbye, Good Brian. Goodbye, John. Justin. Dude, this trip was actually, Brian, I know you have your doubts because you were the spot guy, but I had so much fun. You picked a lot of- good spots. Oh, okay. I thought you were kind of like, I, yesterday you were like, I'm blowing it. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're picking great spots. Well, we made it happen eventually. We made it happen. That's what matters. Ah! <laughs> Bye everyone. Are you you're leaving? I think so, dude. Yeah. I mean, can I, you, can I give you a hug? You can give me three. You're one of the best skateboarders I've ever seen in person. That's not true. I've actually seen your videos. That's mind. completely untrue. Yeah, we need a I John Hill true. part. Oh, yeah, these sick as Oh my gosh, I just remember the little pump exists. I'm gonna miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> Who drew this on my vehicle? Not me. Initial thoughts? God, that was so fun. Sorry, I'm using my iPhone instead of my nice camera. It's packed away, but we're about to drive four hours so hopefully two hours of daylight and then two hours of darkness but we're gonna make it home and that's it here we are in the editing bay i hope you enjoyed that video i'll see you every tuesday and thursday for another video on this channel take care thanks for watching progress daily and keep killing it